Tokyo. Very big city. But not just buildings and concrete, you see. For in the middle of this metropolis, hidden in the forest, a monument to the god stands tall. Today, we infiltrate the Emperor's sacred domain and pay homage to this dope ass shrine. Since Jibobo is God, I will be speaker today. Out looking for quality Mexican food in Japan, he is. Our journey begins at Gate of the University. Uh oh. Go I must. Hey! Hey you! Get! Get! You here. Go! Be gone! Uh, sorry about that. I don't uh... Don't know who that was, but uh, anyway, I'm back. <laughs> Thank God you don't have to listen to that for the whole video, right? Uh, anyway, uh, so our journey began when someone decided that it would be a fantastic idea to walk to Hachioji Station instead of just taking the 10 minute bus. So this first part is showing what the walk is like all the way from our campus to the main hub of our city. Uh, by the way, it took about an hour and a half instead of those 10 minutes. I wonder. Wow. In three quarters of a mile, take a slight left turn onto the path. Is there like a museum for you? After getting closer to the city, we stumbled on this hidden little temple, which had a bunch of different statues and a whole lot of gravestones you can see on the left. We didn't really want to stay too long though, because you know, uh, eight gaijins walking around sacred grounds doesn't really look good, and we didn't want to get chased out by like a monk or something. Still very cool that this is just hidden inside of a giant city. I mean, you can not even tell it's there until you get right up to it. An hour long train ride from Hachioji Station finally meant we were in Tokyo and we started making our way towards Meiji Jingu's entrance. Uh, you really cannot miss it. Meiji Jingu is home to the largest wooden Tori gate in all of Japan. It's made with wood that is over 1600 years old and it stands at about 40 feet tall. If you ever wonder what these things are, they're actually found at just about every Shinto shrine's entrance and stepping through one signifies the transition from the mundane world into the sacred. I think they're sure that one? That's one. I think no, that's the main stuff. In the distance, you can actually see stacks of what look to be barrels, uh, and they are barrels. They are barrels of sake. 
Uh, these barrels have been donated to the shrine from people all across Japan, different breweries, and even from America, France, they have wine barrels too. Uh, it's a really impressive collection. Uh, you may be wondering why people need to donate sake to a shrine, but actually on special occasions, people will actually drink the sake during things like festivals and performances that are held around the year. Uh, and this is because according to Japanese tradition, drinking sake is said to bring you closer to the gods. For a measly 500 yen, or about 4 bucks, you could get access to the inner garden, which was the garden that the Emperor Meiji and his wife used to use all the time back, what, 100 years ago? And it had some of the most beautiful things to offer. Last time I came to this place three years ago, in this pond there were a bunch of little koi fish that were like chomping their mouths whenever you looked over the side, but unfortunately they were not here this time. I do not know what happened to them. This absolutely terrifying thing is an Asian giant horn, and boy was I terrified to get close and record this. Uh, these bad boys are murder machines. They can get three inches long, they're super aggressive, and they kill upwards of 50 people a year in Japan alone. Uh, a not so fun fact, they were also recently found in North America too. So yeah, y'all watching from the USA? Y'all ain't safe. Be careful. It's just soil paper to just like dry it out, right? Oh god, how do you... Oh. A short walk later and we were finally approaching the main shrine's entrance. Uh, but before you go in, you're actually able to cleanse yourself with this nifty little sacred water dispenser. And normally you can grab a cup and, you know, pour it on your hands, but COVID, you know, you had to use it like a fountain. We all spent some time around the main shrine, and when we were finished, I noticed this stall that was giving out what I thought were fortunes. Uh, so what you do is you put a coin in the offering box, typically 100 yen, then you take the fortune holder thingy and uh, shake it until a stick pops out. 
The number on the stick corresponds to a certain poem, uh, and these poems were written by Emperor Meiji himself, and hopefully that specific poem brings meaning to you. Since it's super close by, we decided to stop by Harajuku next, uh, the fashion capital of Japan. I love this shirt. Yeah. This is the incredibly famous Takeshita Street, where all the action happens. My favorite part of this street is the absurd amount of crepe shops that they have here. The street itself isn't too long, you can walk the whole thing in about five minutes. Um, but we were greeted with some really interesting buildings and people towards the end of our journey. I ran into this group called the Gay Idol Group. Uh, they were dressed really cool and they were just parking their car out, giving out free stuff. So took a picture with them, it's pretty cool. All in all, we had a great time. I actually recorded this footage before classes even started. So it was kind of our group's last day to explore all together. Japan is such an interesting country where you have this clash of ancient shrines literally touching the street where the newest pop fashion thrives. And I really can't wait to see what other hidden things Japan has to offer me next. Thanks for watching. Lock the door this time. Uh, yeah, I'm back. Uh, good to be back. Uh, it's been a while since I posted the Fuji video. It was pretty rough editing so I kind of got a little burnt out but I'm back and I had a lot of fun making this video did not find any Mexican food unfortunately uh, it is terribly hard to find here and I am just craving tacos right now so it's it's rough uh, but but I'll keep searching I might be going to uh, Tokyo tomorrow so we will go look out for tacos there anyway uh, yeah uh, Meiji Jingu and Harajuku very cool places um, it really was such a cool shrine it was right in the middle of Tokyo I mean as, as close as you can get basically and it was so quiet you couldn't hear anything um like no cars no nothing of the city it's just really cool to be like just just disappear for a little bit into this uh foresty shrine area um it was really cool when you actually got to the center area you could pray at the shrine and basically what that means is um they didn't let me take photos there i would have taken a video but i don't want to get cursed by the gods um, so basically, you just take a couple coins, toss it in the offering bin, you go up, I think you, uh, like, clap your hands twice, bow twice, and then you, like, you know, say your prayer or whatever, and then you clap once, and then bow, and then you head down. It's pretty cool when, like, everyone's doing it to kind of blend in. Um, but uh, also, right across the street, I mean, it was literally a five-minute walk, is Harajuku, and it's considered the fashion capital of Japan for good reason. When we were there, we saw a lot of people that were either... Uh, cosplaying as anime characters, dressing up in just crazy outfits. I mean, you can look at this stuff online, it's insane. Uh, even some dudes cross-dressing, they were rocking it, good for them. Um, and even at the end, you can see like this dude just carrying all these dogs uh, and this gay idol band, which I don't know really how gay people are represented in Japan, but I know it's not as open as like the West, so good for them for getting out there and doing that. Um... Yeah, my second week of classes are over. It's the Friday, so I'm ready for the weekend to sleep in because I have to literally wake up at 9.30 a.m. every day 
if I want breakfast. If I wake up, if I don't get to breakfast by 9.30 a.m., like, they, they are so on time. It is annoying. Um, so I always have to be up that early. So I'm glad I get to sleep in. I'm just going to skip breakfast tomorrow and go get something else. Uh, it's cool, though. I'm meeting people from all over. I mean, everyone's basically here now who has come. People have been late because they've had visas that have been delayed. Um, so I met a lot of people, I mean, from all over the world. Malaysia, Iran, uh, Turkmenistan, Turkey, India, all places. And they all speak English, thank God. So we can all bond on that one. But it's cool. Uh, yeah, last thing, I just booked a trip to Osaka and Kyoto from October 7th to the 11th. So just give it a heads up. It's going to be really cool. I got a little surprise that I've already kind of booked. So uh, be expecting a cool video when that happens. But yeah, anyway, good to see you guys. Uh, miss everybody. And I will see you next time. Bye. Oh, also one thing I forgot to remember. Uh, <laughs> when we were getting on the train back from Harajuku, we were all exhausted. We hopped on this train, of course, listening to my Apple iPhone telling me where to go. And literally the like train police came on, found us and basically pulled us over. Uh, apparently you needed to reserve seats. Surprise, surprise. My phone fails me again. So they literally pulled us all aside and I thought they were going to kick us off the train, but uh, they just made us pay like an extra like 700 yen, which is like five bucks, but still was kind of terrifying to not be able to really speak Japanese and not know what they're saying. And they're coming on and like making a ruckus and people are looking at us. So yeah. Okay. For real. Goodbye now.